Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday of the third week of Easter. I trust that all is well. Our readings for today from the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 19, 16 to 25. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, 13 to 17. The appointed psalm is number 38. Our preface is for the third Sunday of Easter. Please join us in our opening hymn. Our service continues from page 34 of your Book of Common Prayer with the opening sentence and then on to 35 and following. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are tonight. Blessed be his Son Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Continuing. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence. Of all risen and ascended, Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, that once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once and for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourself, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who sleep. For as by man came dead, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. 
to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins. Give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm number 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand pressed hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me like a heavy burden. They are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all day long. My loins are filled with pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numbed and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O oh Lord, you know my desires. And my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from one and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, do not let them rejoice at my expense. Those who gloat over me, then my foot slips. Truly, I'm on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I'll confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without a cause are mighty. And many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O oh my God. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, beginning at verse 16. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountains, and a blast of the trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like a, the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak, and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summons Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look, otherwise many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. 
Moses said to the Lord, The people are not permitted to come up to the Mount, to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and keep it holy. The Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you. But do not let either the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord. Otherwise, he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee, to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he was coming up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, and a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. Praise be to Christ.
So my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts with you on this morning's gospel reading. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture reading takes us to where John the Baptist was in the process of baptizing in the River Jordan, just previous. According to the Gospel, many Pharisees and Sadducees came to him to be baptized. And while acceding to their requests, he scolded them for their unrighteous ways and urged them to bear fruits worthy of repentance. He warned them of the terrible consequences of their persistence in their own way, that their end was imminent, and that relying on their ancestral heritage will not save them from being struck down and cast into, the, into hell's fire. He explained that his baptism of water was of repentance. But someone is coming who is more powerful than him and superior to him. His baptism would be with the Holy Spirit and fire. He further identified Jesus as the one who will usher the righteous into the kingdom of God and gather the unrepentant to forever burn in the fire which cannot be quenched. It was after this that Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John in the River Jordan. Jesus walk, walked a distance of approximately 60 miles for this purpose. This, of course, indicates the importance, the level of importance which Jesus placed in, in baptism. The importance of baptism should be paramount to those who are followers of Christ. Later on in his ministry, Jesus stressed the importance of baptism when he said to Nicodemus, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Jesus' walking the 60 miles from Galilee to Jordan was more for the benefit of those who accompanied him and even for our benefit today. The importance of baptism cannot be overemphasized and the interaction between Jesus and John at Jordan further supports this. When Jesus went to John, John told him, I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me? John had absolutely no doubt as to the divinity of Jesus. He was sure that Jesus had no sin of which he needed to, be, to repent and be baptized. John's baptism was for repentance of sin. So John was reluctant to baptize Jesus, merely for this reason. Instinctively, John reflected the, power, the proper order of the matter of baptism would have been for Jesus to baptize him. Jesus did not at all deny this. He simply responded by repeating his request by saying, Let it be now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. John had recognized Jesus' superiority and had identified Jesus as the Holy One who had, he had mentioned would come after him. We now remember here that all of this was unfolding in public view. So all who were there would have been given a first-hand insight into the relationship and the level of righteousness between Jesus and John. Jesus' respond, response to John was to explain to him that the water baptism was necessary for the fulfillment of all righteousness. Jesus always acted in reverence and obedience to his Father. 
This baptism was to identify with God's righteous purpose for his people. Jesus was identifying himself with those righteous and godly Israelites who presented themselves to be baptized. To be baptized into repentance. Repentance. Jesus was publicly strengthening the necessity for the people of God to be baptized into repentance. This is why very carefully, very careful attention must be given to this sacrament of baptism. For example, Holman contends that if Jesus had refused to participate in John's baptism, Jesus would have seemed like a rebel rather than one who came to fulfill righteousness. Now, on the other hand, William MacDonald holds the view that there is yet deeper meaning. He advanced that baptism was a ritual symbol, symbolizing the way in which Jesus was, fulfilled, was to fulfill all the righteous claims of God against sin. Continuing, he said, that his immersion typifies his baptism in the water of God's judgment at Calvary. His emergence from the water foreshadowed his resurrection. This baptism, which took place at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, pointed to the end of his ministry, when Jesus, by his death, burial, and resurrection, would provide a righteous basis by which sinners would be justified and breaking the struggle, the struggle hold of sin and death. The passage continues by saying that he consented, that John consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came from the water, suddenly the heavens opened up to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Here we see Jesus receiving the Spirit of God at his baptism. In our own baptism, we believe that we receive the Holy Spirit and are incorporated into the membership of Christ. In the declaration of baptism, the priest says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ in holy baptism. So we can easily see how this is possible because of, his, because of Jesus' participation in John's baptism. Again, in Acts 3, 37, we read, When Peter, in his address to converts, he says to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins are forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again at Romans 6, we read, Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism and death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, like his, we'll be certainly be uni united with him in a resurrection like his. And so, my dear friends, this and so much more points to the significance of Jesus's, Jesus being baptized by John. The reading went on to say, And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. There could have been no greater endorsement to the baptism than that express, that expressed satisfaction of God the Father. This was a most hallowed occasion for the three members of the Trinity who were, were present. The beloved Son was there, so that the Holy Spirit in the so was the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and the Father's voice was heard from heaven. 
My friends, because of this, there can be no doubt as to the prominence placed on Jesus' baptism and even on our own baptism. We too must hold baptism as a hallowed, hallowed and sacred sacrament and accord it the reverence it truly desires. And may God grant us his grace so to do. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
snow confess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. By way of intercession, we continue to pray for the well-being of God's people and for, sure the world, and for God's abundant blessing upon them. We dare to pray for peace in the world in spite of it all. We pray that the hearts of men would soften towards each other. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide, for the well-being of the leaders of the Church, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby, we pray for our Archbishop, our Provincial Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. In our diocese, we pray for our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley, thanking God for his blessings upon him. We continue to pray for the retired bishops, Calvin and Clive. Today, in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Grace Church New Grant for the Reverend Canon Wilson Thomas. We also pray for all human works and the unemployed. In our parish, we continue to pray for the well being of our parish priests, Reverend Father Anderson Maxwell. We pray for the well being of Reverend Presbyter Pontifex Country, we pray for the Deacon Mark Haynes. Remember in our prayers our former rector, Canon Jemmet Hazelwood. We now turn to page 198 of our Book of Common Prayer as we pray for the departed. In this instance, Reverend Father Titus Akbarali. Almighty God, remember before you today your faithful servant Titus. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you'll receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have faithfully served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And so continuing our intercession, we pray for the, our congregations, the congregations at, at Maloney, the Church of the Transfiguration, St. Adams, Lopino and St. Mary's. We also pray, pray that we be able to re-energize the congregation at Liverpool by God's grace. We pray for those who are sick and letting them know that they are not alone and that they should invite Christ into their lives. We pray for all those who have passed 
and pray that God will grant them his rest. Continuing with Suffer J, we pray. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among our people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that innocent choice, your will, may be done. Continuing with the third, with this preface for the third Sunday of Easter, we pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Returning to page 45, we pray. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence break us this close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good works we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of our devotion for this morning. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 